Hey guys, how's it going? It's Retro Dave. We're back with another video. Hope you're all well. Hope you had a great Christmas break and a new year and all that. And um, I think it's about the 12th of January now, 30th of January. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone had a good time and a good break anyway. Um, I won't bore you to death of what I've been doing, but I'll give you a very, very brief rundown. Um, I left my job. Um, the job I was doing for so over seven years, um, that's now over with. Um, I decided to move on um, onto something uh, a bit different. So kind of uh, done my first week last week. Um, so I've really been concentrating over the last few weeks on kind of like revising on, or say revising, yeah, yeah revising on um, all different legislation and regulations and stuff I've got to learn for my new job. Um, so yeah, over Christmas break I've been basically swatting up um, before I started. Um, the new job so um, yeah I'm a week down it's all going alright so far for those of you that know kind of what I'm doing um, yeah so it's going alright I'm pleased uh, I'm pleased uh, of a new change so it's, a change is always good so yeah so changed my job um, I've had to obviously give up a company car I've had to buy another car um, that's been a bit of a nightmare but um, you know I've got the car sorted out now um, oh yeah I, I, won't, I won't boil it to death there's, there's been ups and downs in the last the last couple of months so that, that's all I'm gonna say but yeah anyway back on track um, yeah so basically um, it's been a while since I did a video um, some things have happened with the game room which I'm gonna show you in a minute um, we'll focus on track and field right this moment um, before we move on to the next thing um, so track and field as you can see I've been playing that um, quite a bit and as you can see I've got a half decent score 2.4 million I don't think it has to be grumbled out I'm really really happy with that um, I did like a four hour uh, marathon game over Christmas break um, just been practicing and practicing and practicing on the game and um, yeah I managed to basically keep playing it and looping it over and over again about like 35 times so um, yeah really really pleased that I've kind of I'm not, I don't want to say mastered the game um, I'm not a master I don't see myself as a master but I'm I can play it I'm, I'm happy that I can play it um, and I'm looking forward to going to, to Arcade Club at some point and playing some people up there. Um, I mean, I know Craig, Craig's here again. Um, he's obviously a bit of a track and field hero. So um, hopefully, uh, Craig, if you're coming up next time, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have a game on there. Um, so what we're we doing with this, I've had a few problems with track and field, to be honest. Um, since my last video, um, I bought the Hypersports PCB and this track and field PCB and they both broke down um, we had sound problems graphical problems um, it's been a bit of a nightmare but um, Daz um, the guy I bought the, the boards off of um, very kindly took them back and uh, repaired them and then he sent them back to me and then Hypersports broke again and he took it back again and now I've got it back on Friday um, and I put it in last night and it's now working, I'd say, 98%. Um, there's a couple of graphical glitches on the archery and the pole vault, but it doesn't stop the game from playing um, before the whole thing was locked up and um, was just completely frozen garbage. Um, so a couple of little glitches on it, um, but Darren just said it's a case of probably just pushing a couple of the ROMs in that have gone, kind of put, maybe come loose during posting, but I'll sort that another time. At the minute, I'm not touching it, it's working, because you keep messing around with these boards and they're going to break down so I'm just going to leave it for now um, it's in, it's working, it's, it's playable um, and that's all that matters so what I've actually done is um, I'll tell you what I did, I'll spin the camera around to show you what, what's going on a bit okay. later so we've got track and field and uh, what I've done is I've actually installed a Mike's Arcade jammer switcher so basically I've now got Hypersports and track and field running in the same machine so all you do is you press like player one and press player two and it jumps to the next board. So I can basically play both games in the same cabinet utilising the unique kind of button layout for these two games. So it's kind of best use of this machine in, in my opinion. Um, and I'll see if you want to play the track and field again. Same thing. Bring it back. So there's like a little board. I'm not going to open this right now. It's looks about the size of a CD case, um, and it has uh, a uh, connector to put the jammer harness onto. Then you put the game board that you want to boot up from the start, like track and field, on the back of it. 
So that's like your main game that loads up. Then on the side, there's another edge connector with a, a jammer extension harness running around the back of the tray in the back of the machine. And then there's a Hypersports is screwed to the side of the cab over here in the drawer. So I can run both boards in here. There's plenty of space in there. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with how that's panned out. And uh, yeah, track and field and Hypersports in the same machine. Really, really happy. I've been waiting for, waiting for this to happen for what feels like forever. But we've had some issues with the boards, but thankfully now we're up and running. And um, yeah, I can really start to make some use um, out of that switcher I bought and um, Hypersports now, because I need to get some more practice at Hypersports. I'm actually pretty bad at it. Um, yeah, the pole vault seems to be quite a problem, but yeah, I need to learn how to play it. So yeah, a bit more practice involved on, on this game. Okay, so um, what have I been buying and selling? I've uh, sold some more stuff, sold some more console games um, to make way for another arcade machine. Yep, it's, um, I bought another one. <laughs> I bought it actually, I actually bought the cab back in October um, when I was on holiday, and um, I actually picked it up yesterday. So me and Duncan, Golden Age Gamer, went and picked it up. I haven't done a video like I've done before in the van. To be honest with you, I just wanted to get the van, get there and get back um, as quick as possible. It's a really, really long day. Um, so I didn't do a video last night, um, but I'm doing it now. So what have we bought? What have we got? So the new game is, it's a Play Choice 10 and a very, very nice near mint condition Play Choice 10 as well. Um, really really happy with it um, there's a couple of niggles which i'm going to come to in a minute i don't want to be all negative but i'm i'm really happy with it overall is uh, what i'm going to say so play choice 10 um this is the american version and it's a single monitor version um which i think is you know a bit harder to come by normally it's through a dual screen normally you have the screen at the bottom and a screen at the top um which shows which games are inside and um, this is all done on the single screen um, so it's a lot smaller than the um, the double screen one normally. It's a lot taller because you've got two monitors in and it weighs a ton. So this is the same profile uh, or same width as a normal Nintendo like Donkey Kong cab. The control panel is slightly higher and the cabinet is probably another, I don't know, four inches taller, maybe, if that, than um, than the other Nintendo cab. So it's, like I say, it's quite a nice size. Um, so, okay, let's go over it quickly. So side art both sides this has got a bit of a peel on it um, as you can see like the dark red there and the rest of it's kind of like a very very like faded pinky red so it's got a little bit of sun fade on the side art on both sides i'll take you around to this one now this one's intact but yeah just a little bit of fade on the side art but i can live with it um marquee bulb is out um i knew about that but i've ordered another strip uh, another fluorescent tube um the one i had spare is too short the light fitting is different in this cabinet to the other nintendo games um so that's on order what else we got okay yeah unfortunately this get this cabinet did suffer um some damage in transit at some point during the unloading loading process whether it's stateside or uk so i don't know um but this it unfortunately has suffered um a bit of damage which i wasn't happy about um but what can i do you know i just you know I can't send it back <laughs> so, so it's a case of kind of living with it and uh, making the best of it and as you might be able to see it's just here guys by this um the top of the control panel unfortunately it's taken a whack on the corner and it's broken the um the top edge here you can see it um last night I pulled this t-molding out and I put some gorilla glue in there I've had a big massive um, plastic G cramp on here all night squeezing it and it's now solid as a rock so that's been glued back on but yeah fortunately it has got a little bit of damage which uh, yeah it it yeah it, it is annoying <laughs> because as you can see the machine is absolutely beautiful other than that mark um but you know what can what can you do um yeah glue it glue it and live with it is uh, all we can do Control panel, very, very nice. No damage, no rips, no tears. 
really nice. Um, monitor, very nice. I've spent probably about three hours this afternoon adjusting this monitor. Um, so this is a world's gone a K7000. Um, other Nintendo games normally have the Sanyo 20 Easy or 20 EZ if you're in the UK. Um, but this is a later cabinet. This is actually 1990. Let me see if it'll focus on the marquee. Um, Donkey Kong's 81, Junior's 82. So this is actually much, much newer. It's got a newer style monitor in there. Um, it needed a little bit of adjustment. Um, the, the focus on that was a bit out. Some of the colours of the blue was a bit out. Um, Duncan helped me unload it last night. We did try and tinker with it a little bit and the focus is a bit all over the place. Um, but yeah, I've now managed to get it as good as I'm going to get it, basically. Um, so it looks really, really crisp, really, really nice. There's no burn on the monitor at all. Um, this is the original, like, this is a smoked glass bezel. Really, really nice. There was one tiny little scratch in the middle, but nothing to worry about. As you can see, it's loaded up with games. Um, it didn't come with all those games. It only came with four. Um, and I bought the other boards um, before the machine came up back in October, November time. Um, and it also comes with these really cool um, toppers as well. Um, obviously, it didn't come with the cabinet. I've obviously got these separately over the last few months, couple of months. So these two, I traded um, a couple of Super Nintendo games uh, with a mate of mine. Um, for these, we did a straight swap. Um, these are actually harder to find and more harder to find than the games themselves. I think they're really, really cool. They basically screwed these on the top of the machine um, to advertise like the latest game. Or it says it's new on there. So you'd walk past an arcade, you'd think, oh, you know, it'd catch your eye. And obviously it'd entice you over to come and play it to experience the new game before it was released on the console. Um, I think some games that was true, maybe not others, again, because obviously the age of the games in here vary. Um, so Obviously, the play choice is run on a timer. As you can see, it says zero there. So you pay, so you pay to play. Um, so it's like a demonstration unit, so to speak, to allow you to try out um, new games before you bought them in the, in the store for the home console. So you put your credits in, and it, you basically pay for time to play. So it is the full games. They're not just like demos. Um, it is the full, basically, NES game. Um, and you basically pay to play. Um, for as long as you want and you can experience all the games on the list so you'd put some quarters in you choose a game try it out if you didn't like it or got bored you could reset go back to the menu and you could play as many games as you wanted for the time you had and the time counts down you get like 20 seconds to put another coin in to keep playing so it's a very clever way of also making money um, out of playing the games um, I think it's a really really cool cabinet um, it is basically um, an RGB NES in a, in a, in a massive cabinet. <laughs> that is basically all it is. Um, you know, I mean, the people that mod NES consoles, I think, use the um, picture processing unit chip off of the um, the circuit board PCB in this machine to mod consoles. So, you know, the picture quality is amazing. Um, you can't really capture it. Um, you might be able to see it there. It looks different in the phone to the to the TV itself. But yeah, it looks really cool. So it's basically RGB NES in a huge wooden box. Um, NES, Super Nintendo are our favorite consoles, as you may or may not know. Um, so it's something I really wanted. Um, and I saw it in the condition. I thought, wow, I need uh, this is just on. I, I've not seen one like it in this condition. I think the US single monitor looks better than the double screen and the UK spec um, play choice. So this came up and it was kind of like, uh, I just kind of really, really wanted it. Um, so I'm really happy with it. Again, shame about the little knock on the control panel. Um, I can live with it, you know, it's not like the bit's completely missing. Um, or it hasn't bent the control panel or whatever. So a little, little chip on there. Other than that, it's really, really lovely. Um, again, I'm hoping the bulb will come in the week so the marquee will light up and it will really finish it off um, so let me just kind of give you a very very quick demonstration I also want to say I mean the condition you know there's like not a, I say not a chip on it apart from that but nowhere else there's not a bang a scratch nothing it's totally like 
near, near, dare I say, perfect. There's like not a mark on it. It is absolutely flawless, both sides. Um, yeah, I got really lucky with this, I think, and it's it's got like low plays on it. So I'm not sure if you're about to see the. Oh, you ain't really see the counter in there. You might just. It's got seven thousand seven hundred and sixty-three plays. Um, so just to give you some idea of the low number. Um, so Donkey Kong. Uh, let, me, let me tell you. That's in the way more than that. So this has got 34,000 plays. So Junior's got 34,000. I think Donkey Kong's got about 24,000. Time Pilot, Time Pilot has got 37,000 plays. So that's just give you like an indication of like the the amount of life and the amount of wear these have had. You know. 25,000, 37,000, 7,000. So as you can see, it is in barely run in, if you like. Now, um, I've got this off of Ken over in the States. Um, and this is, he told me this came out of a home and the guy had it for 15 years in his house. So it's home use for mostly half of its life. Uh, most of its life, it's, um, it been in someone's house looked after it hasn't been beaten around in an arcade anywhere and climbed over and had drinks built on it all the rest of it um you know so it's in really really nice condition so yeah really really happy with it so anyway let me um show you let me put some credit on so if i press this um button in here you'll see the time go up so that's one coin two coins so i'm just going to keep pressing it you can load it right up all that happens is the time will just count down and we can play whatever we want so as you can see, I'll tell you what we'll do. So um, obviously you know what Mario Brothers looks like. Original Mario Brothers. Yep, right, so you press, you press reset, back to the menu. So I think the only game on here, uh, okay, the game, so Goonies, this never came out on the NES. And we've got Goonies 2, this is, I think the Famicom version. Um, so this is something a bit different. So basically the idea of this game is you need to um, get the bombs from the mice, try that one handed, and then you go for the doors. Got one out. So basically you have to go around and get the keys, get the bombs, rescue the goonies and get out. So it's a bit different to play. Um, but the rest of them are basically NES games. Um, Gauntlet is awesome. So two player Gauntlet would be awesome. So. There we go. It's awesome. Uh, Mike, um, yeah, Mike Tyson's punch out. Love that. So it's going to be awesome playing this. On here. See the timer counts down. You can't really see the pitch quality through this phone, but it is really, really nice. So this has got a battery backup. Um, so it saves you the time it takes you to kind of do the rounds and, and beat the uh, opponents. Yeah, love some Mike Tyson's punch out. So there we go, that's your list. So basically that will count down and when you're out of time, that's it. Or you put more money into play. Um, I wish Double Dragon was two player. Unfortunately this is a single player. So yeah, that's it. That's what I want to show you. <laughs> it's, um, I played Choice 10 with 10 games in it and I'm really happy with it. Um, again, Hypersports is working. Um, really, really happy to have the switcher. So I'm going to play both games and everything else is up and running as it should be. Pac-Man, Popeye, Donkey Kong and Junior. So yeah, really happy. We're up to seven and that is my lot. Um, I've got no more room. <laughs> as you can see, we're down to, we've definitely encroached into the older uh, console side. And uh, we are now down to one bookcase of console games. Consolidate my collection right down. 
and um, that is basically that is basically it guys so I'm gonna stop filming and I'm gonna play some games for dinner and um, yeah I hope everyone's well and uh, I shall catch you again soon for another video right take it easy